Welcome you live to Larry Walker Court, the Walt Price Student Fitness Center at Everett Community College. We're ready for some district basketball championship. On the boys' side, it's the Mount Lake Terrace Hawks, the Ferndale Golden Eagles. Right away, let's go down to the floor and... Steve Willits is with Jason Owens of the Ferndale Golden Eagles. Thank you very much, Tom. Coach, I'm going to ask you, one in six at the end of December, did you ever think that you'd be in a district championship game here in late February? One in seven. One in seven, there we go. <laughs> yeah, no, you know what? Our concept of one game at a time is all that matters. We believed all along. Uh, obviously, we got a lot of things going our way for a while, but yeah, we're here. It's fun. I'm excited. And I've got to ask you here, too, because I know that it's much bigger than basketball. Tell me about the shirts that you're wearing tonight and what the significance of that is. Yeah, so we had a player named Sean Morrison who found out he had a seizure and found out that he had arteries in his brain that were all tangled up. And he played with us through December, and he had surgery in February to untangle all those things. And so we just say, hey, we love the game, we play for the game, but ultimately it's much bigger than a game. Sean watching us possibly right now? Sean is actually, yes, watching you right now. Sean, a big shout out to you, coach. Best of luck. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right, so we're going to head on over here to talk to Nayland Sood right now. And I've got to tell you guys, kind of fun for us to look out here. A uh, few of the members, not just one or two, I think at least three or four of the members of the 1977 Mount Lake Terrace State Championship basketball team in the house. They just came by and shook hands with Nayland Sood. The Terrace community, that we always talk about it, coach. It's basketball, but it's so much more than that. It's family, and they're all here tonight. Yeah, seeing those three guys, there's no pressure, right? <laughs> so, no, it's, it's wonderful. That's what makes Mount Lake Terrace High School such a special place. The community feel, support of our alumni, support of our longtime fans, and uh, this basketball team has given them a lot to get excited about. You've had a lot of success throughout the years, but these district championship games are never promised. You came in as a four seed, even with the two losses, and yet here we are tonight. How important is this for your program? Oh, it's always important. It's a district championship, but one thing I found out over the years We've been fortunate to be in it, but you're also playing another good team. And you're playing a team that's done some positive things to get to this point, as is with Ferndale. So they've had a good, very good year. They built things up and they've had a good run in the postseason. So, you know, Steve, you've heard it before, but we got our work cut out for us to, uh, to, to be successful tonight. But we're looking forward to the challenge, and that's what we're most excited about. And of course, a unique challenge in a team like Ferndale, who comes in from the North End. You haven't played them yet this year. What kind of a game are we expecting? Well, I'll let you know in about an hour and a half, but, uh, you know, they, they, they execute their stuff. They defend pretty well. They mix up their defenses. They've got some shooters. Uh, they've got multiple guys that can score the basketball. It's not just saying that. That's what they do. So, you know, we have, everybody on our team has to know who they're guarding and do a great job. It's got to be a collective team effort tonight on defense, and then hopefully we can uh, use our defense for some offense. Nalen, best of luck. We'll talk to you at halftime. Okay, thank you, Steve. All right, before I go back up to you guys, too, I should let you know one of the Ferndale assistant coaches stopped me a moment ago and wanted me to make sure that I knew that not only are these basketball players out here, but a handful of guys on this team, I think there might be four of them, who are all conference first or second team football players for Ferndale. So right. good athletes out here, Tom. Yeah, great athletes. Welcome back. Thanks for being with us. Steve Willits on the floor. Joel Boyer up here on the uh, press level, three stories above the uh, floor here at Everett Community College. You gotta love district championship basketball. <laughs> oh, Tom, you know, when I started looking at things a couple of weeks ago, playoffs were starting up. You start looking, you know, obviously former coach, you're like, what, what day are those championships? <laughs> and all along the way, and I'll tell you, there's those loser out games that right. you just hate, but they're part of the, part of the game. You get kind of like a little more nervous for those and stuff. The championships, the nerves are a little different because they, both teams are going on. Right. So they know they're going on to the regional round. But when you can get a district title, it's special. You cut down the nets, you get to keep a piece of that. There's something special about that. It's an exciting night. Well, they they had you a trophy. That's that's something that goes into the trophy case. You don't get that for winning the league. Nope. You nope. don't get that for finishing fourth in, or, or fourth in state. Yes, you do. But you know what? <laughs> yes. But, but but regardless of anything, yep. you have a trophy to put in there. And and I'll tell you, when you look back at those dis district trophies, those championship, those different championship trophies, right. there's usually a picture of that team put behind it. And you can look back there 30 years, 40 years later at almost every high school in the state, and you can say, that's dad right there, or that's mom right there. And there's something about that. And so there's an excitement when you can put that trophy in the case. And both these teams have been through adversity. The Ferndale Golden Eagles, as Coach Pinchett corrected Steve, he thought it was one and six. They were, hey, no, we were even worse than that. We were one <laughs> and seven to start. But here they are playing for the district title. And, and like he said, like the shirts say, more than just a game. 
they've had a few adversities, obviously. I mean, as a team, Sean Morrison having to have some surgery and obviously take care of a very – it sounds, sounds incredibly – Gosh, it's a big deal, you know. Well, so, yeah. so seeing these guys go that one and seven, they turn it around. They're dealing with adversity with a teammate that they're close with. It, it, what a cool story! I mean, I, not knowing that until Steve reported on it, but what an incredible story that adversity happens. But there's a couple on the court and off the court for these guys. And Mount Lake Terrace, they had adversity. The COVID, the weather, it all hit. They played a game on two, Thursday, December sixteenth. Their next game was on Tuesday, January eleventh. That's. <laughs> Like three and a half weeks without having played one basketball I've game. I've never heard of that. I, in, until, our co until COVID hit in the last right. couple years, I've never heard of having a month break in the middle of December to the middle of January. That just doesn't exist in basketball. Normally, you get about four days off if you're lucky at Christmas time right. as coaches, as teams. Um, and that just really throws off a, a, a program's just kind of a vibe. Sometimes even a culture. Sometimes it's hard to come back from. Um, props to them just to be able to fight through a very talented team. We expected to see them maybe in this position with an state RPI rank of four. I mean, we know they're a talented team, but to be here, to, to go through that month-long break or three and a half weeks of break, impressive. And they're riding the crest of an eight-game winning streak, including three wins here in the district tournament. They beat Mount Vernon 61-55 back on Tuesday the 8th, and then they came through, beat the Everett Seagulls 71-55 last Saturday. Midweek in the semifinals, the game played right here. It was the um, Arlington Eagles and the Mount Lake Terrace Hawks. Mount Lake Terrace got the win 51-46. So they come in to play Ferndale tonight. The uh, Ferndale Golden Eagles in the uh, district tournament, they get a win over Shorecrest 71-64. They get a win over Cascade 73-51. And they got a win in the semifinals here at ECC on Wednesday. They won at 72-65 over the Stanwood Spartans. So both teams coming in four or three wins, looking for their fourth win in the district tournament and a district championship. And I think one of the things that, to think about, too, when we talk about end of the season, playoffs, you kind of throw those records out the window. Well, let's talk about Ferndale beating Shorecrest in the first round of the playoffs. They played them the very first game of the season on December 1st and lost by 24. They turn around and play Shorecrest here in the first round of the playoffs and beat them by seven. I mean, you you got to think, Shorecrest, like, what the heck just happened? They're the one seed and they just got knocked out of that but that's what happens. You kind of get rid of the records, get rid of those things, get rid of the seating, and you have this team playing this team. What's going to happen? Well, and that win over Shorecrest really disrupted this district tournament. <laughs> Shorecrest had to go through the loser's bracket and just kind of, and then today, Stanwood gave them all they could handle. Earlier today in the 11 a.m. game here, it was Shorecrest over Stanwood, 59-56. So Shorecrest will advance. Stanwood is done for the year. We were expecting Stanwood maybe to make it a t uh, an appearance in the regionals. Yeah, and that's one of those things when you have, you know, proverbial, well, by seeding, it was an upset, you know, but you have Ferndale upsetting Shorecrest in the first round of the tournament. I mean, shoot, we texted, I think, that night saying this just turned this entire bracket on its tail. You know, everything's just up in the air now. Yep. And you look at all of a sudden you got, you, you kind of as coaches look, you know, if your seedings hold, this is who's playing here, this is playing here. If we get knocked out here, we just have to make sure to take care of this. All of a sudden you got the number one seed in the whole tournament in the loser's bracket. <laughs> Son of a gun, that just made everything different. So, um, you know, props to Ferndale for not just knocking off the one seed in the first round. And sometimes you kind of have that letdown of that huge win. Uh-oh, oh, we got beat in the quarterfinals. No, right. props to them for getting through the quarters, the semis, and getting here to this championship game. And the other team besides Shorecrest that's advancing into the regionals, four come out of this region or come out of the district. It was Arlington over Cascade. That was that was at the 2.30 game. Arlington beat Cascade 70 to 54. And we call them the upstart Cascade Bruins. They came in with a 10 and 10 record. But you know what? Hey, they played for a, a chance to play in the regionals. Absolutely. And, and, and like we're saying, I mean, Ferndale right here is sitting at 11 and 10. But they've also, they're riding this win streak, they're riding high. And you know when they've won three straight games, like you just talked about, in this district tournament, there's a belief. And when you win and win and win, you knock off a good team in the process, some, a, a few good teams in the process here, there's a belief that just begins to permeate through everything that you do as a coach, as players. You expect that shot to go down. You hit that big three. Let's see what Ferndale's going to do tonight. Clearly, Terrace has the better record and the better RPI, but we've seen it too many times that that doesn't matter at this time of the year. So the starters being introduced for the Mount Lake Terrace Hawks, Chris Megan, a 5'10", a junior, Vito Merkirchen, a 6'1", senior, Jeffrey Anamaya was a 5'11", a senior, 
along with Addison Maddox, a 6'4 senior, and Zevion Jones, a 6'2 sophomore. That'll be the starters for Nayland Sood and the Mount Lake Terrace Hawks. For the Ferndale Golden Eagles, Mark Schlichting, a 6'2 senior, Connor Walker, a 6'0 sophomore, Jason Guillory, a 6'2 senior, Luke Wells, a 6'0 senior, Damian Tony, a 6'2 junior. We'll take a break, come back, opening tip-off coming up next right here on KRKO. We're getting set for the opening tip-off here between the Ferndale Golden Eagles and the Mount Lake Terrace Hawks. Both teams will advance to the regional round. The regionals, who they play, when they play, that'll all be decided tomorrow by the WIAA. Sometime around noon or so, they start to uh, leak those uh, brackets as to what's going to happen next week for the regional round. You'd like to finish in the top eight because that gives you a free chance to get into the Tacoma Dome, and really, Joel Boyer, that's what everybody wants to play. We want to play in the Dome. Absolutely. 12 teams get to play in the Dome after that regional round. If you're one of the top eight and you happen to lose in that top eight game, you are still alive. You just have to play Wednesday at the Dome instead of getting the bye into the Thursday at the Dome. So regardless, if you're top eight, you know you're going to the Dome. And that is, like you said, Tom, that's the biggest thing. You want to have to use those reservations for the hotel. You want to have to use... Uh, the, the, that van place, yes, you want to have to go to the Dome. Uh-oh. They're bringing the ladder out. That's never, that's never Nor a good sign. Normally we cut down the nets at the end of the game, <laughs> but it looks like the Arlington AD Tom Royce is going to risk his life on the ladder. Uh, you know what? Tom Royce has the eyes of an eagle. I feel like Gene, There's ha a pun Gene There's Hackman a should be here. Come on. <laughs> did you not get my eyes of an eagle yes, right there? Yes. Pun yes. intended. <laughs> that's the Arlington Eagles AD Tom Royce is up on his ladder. So they're just making some adjustments to the uh, to the rim. I think we're okay. You know what? That's good officiating. That's the officials going, we're going to make sure. And let me tell you something. There were um, five other games earlier today. Nobody noticed. Well, <laughs> officials are, or, or former basketball coach, head basketball coach Tom Roy is saying, wait a second here. Somebody caught it. Well done. Here we go. Rick Dunstan, Jared Flory, and Brandon Mullen are the officials tonight. It's a Mount Lake Terrace Hawks and the Ferndale Golden Eagles. Ferndale coached by Jason Owens. Nalen Suit, head coach of the Mount Lake Terrace Hawks. A district championship on the line. Both teams will advance. And we're getting set for the opening tip-off here. Larry Walker Court, Everett Community College, the Walt Price Student Fitness Center. Waiting for the whistle from our referee. He's telling him, blue, you go that way. White, you go that way. I'm taking the whistle out of my mouth in case I get clubbed in the top of the head. And here we go. And it's going to be controlled by Mount Lake Terrace. They go down, and they'll miss right off the bat. A miss by Chris Megan and controlled by Ferndale. Golden Eagles in the navy blue uniforms with gold, hence the Golden Eagles. I like the eagle wings down on the uh, shorts. Here's turnaround, jumper on the way, and one goes up. Tom, I'm going to tell you right now, that is the stockiest point guard I've seen in a while, and he is going to have his way. Chris Megan for the Hawks is yep. going to have, have to work to keep him off that block. Jason Guillory, 6'2", senior, as Steve mentioned, four all-league football players on this uh, Ferndale. That's, that's the old days of the Northwest yes. League. Yes, you're playing multi-sport athletes, playing multiple sports. I love it. It's what so you want to see. The Free throw miss. It's a 2-0 lead for the 
Ferndale Golden Eagles, the first lead of the ball game. Now second possession by Mount Lake Terrace. They'll work the perimeter. A one 2 2 zone right there by the Ferndale Eagles. Too hard. Anima will with the miss. Guillory goes through. Euro step, no. Foul, yes. Pretty I'll Euro tell you step. what, if he's coming down the lane, mm -hmm. get out of mm -hmm. the way. Mm -hmm. If you're going to wear a charge, you are going to wear it. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have Trojans <laughs> backwards on your back from the uh, Yeah, end, end you're going to be planted there. down there. <laughs> that was an impressive. I mean, that honestly, though, do a Euro step move yeah. like that, Tom, that's great footwork. And, and he did it clean as can be. That's one of the things I feel that our referees have gotten really schooled on the last handful of years because a lot of high school players didn't really use a Euro step move for a long time. And now it doesn't matter, guys or girls. You're seeing all, yep. all your top players yep. are using that. So... Um, great job by the referees to note. Nope, he was clean on his steps. Ball goes out of bounds. Turnover by Mount Lake Terrace. Maddox had picked up that earlier foul. First personal second team foul. Out of bounds. Baseline. Ferndale after the Mount Lake Terrace. Turnover. And just Guillory will bring it up. Some full court pressure here, but we're just trying to make sure if he makes a mistake, we're there to pounce on it. 4 nothing lead. And is anybody else going to know they're going to call the off? This time they're going to call the offensive foul. Hmm. I didn't see that much contact. Nope. Nope. And I'm hoping that maybe is not the way we're going to be calling it, calling it super tight. That's one thing you and I fully agree on, Tom. We love to see these games, especially at this time of the year. You want the best players playing in the biggest games at the end of it. Now, it doesn't mean we give away, don't call fouls, but both teams are physical. They're going to be fine with a little bit of ticky-tackness. Top of the key, they go as they work it. Motlick Terrace. Outside three ball, too hard, no good. Missed by McCutcheon, and it'll be controlled by the Ferndale Golden Eagles. Pull up, Mark Schlichting rattles, oh. rims around, and goes through. Mark Schlichting, the quarterback for the Ferndale Golden Eagles, and he buries the uh, jumper, and it's a 7 nothing lead. Motley Terrace can't get anything to fall, and another rebound here after a miss. Rebounded by the uh, Ferndale Golden Eagles, Damian Tony. That outside three on the way. That one won't go for Luke Wells, and a foul called on the rebound. It's going to be on to Ferndale. Looks like Damian Tony, I think, right there had two hands in the back of uh, Xavion Jones, might have been, I think it was, and tried to see if he could get a little cheap one there. No, that was definitely a good call. Good call. Uh, one thing about this Ferndale defense, we're seeing this one-two-two. It's kind of it's a really a pack line defense. They're staying inside the proverbial three-point line for a high school, the old high school one, and only going out to the shooter that has the ball. Only right. going outside that line and really trying to pack in the middle part of the key to not allow anything inside. Another turnover by uh, Mount Lake Terrace. They've yet to dent the scoreboard. We're at 5:52 to play in the opening quarter. Glad you're with us, Tom Lafferty, along with Joel Boyer, Buddy Patrick. On the stats tonight, we've got Steve Willett working the floor, working the press table over there. Actually, he's up here on the uh, eat, he eating munchies up here <laughs> on the press level right now. Step through move. That is Schlichting and one. Mark Schlichting, the quarterback, as we mentioned, for the football team. And, you know, the principal <laughs> violist in the Ferndale Symphony. <laughs> huh? I was. I should have bet Buddy up here, our statistician. How long is it going to be before Tom mentions his viola career? Uh, you know, we, we we knew that was going to be coming out. But let's talk real quick about the belief. Yep. Eleven and ten Ferndale, but there is a belief. They've won their last three games. They had a great. They had a horrible early season on, and then they only lost four games the rest of the way after they start out one and seven. There's a belief in this team. Well, they are not surprised being up 10 nothing. They're pitching a shutout so far. The second foul was on McCutcheon. His, it's going to be the uh, third team foul as now Mount Lake Terrace is working. They just kind of look out of sorts, don't they? Like they don't understand the defense that's being played. Now they'll dump it down low, put it up off the glass. Too hard, no good. The miss there by Maddox and the control by Ferndale. Golden Eagles, Schlichting, measures for the three. Too short, oh, no good. That would that looked good from here, though. Yeah, it did. It's like, oh, that goes down. And Maddox got the rebound. Up the floor it goes, running into a brick wall. Wow. Was Anima. Anima. I'm going to get it right eventually. Another rebound here by Ferndale. Guillory goes down. One on four. And he gets the benefit of the foul, and he'll go to the free throw line. 
It, you uh, know, no, they're going to put him out of bounds. Uh, they said it was on the floor there. You know, one thing we're talking about, Terrace has to kind of figure out the defense. They're not scoring. They're down 10 nothing. Yeah. Coach Nalen sued. The most cool guy in the entire building. Sure, sitting it, sitting down, <laughs> legs, legs crossed. crossed. Yep. No emotion. No, he's wearing a mask. But, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. there's. But uh, let me tell you what. There's emotion. Absolutely. <laughs> Guillory goes in, loses off the back of a of a defender who wasn't even watching. Now go, that's one extra step. Now, the Euro step may work, but that's that's Eastern Europe right there. That's, uh, that, that's you're in no the middle longer. of the Mediterranean Ocean on that one. <laughs> he never got that one dribble he had to get down there. And that's the hard thing. It's like, this is going to be the thing that, that turnover, but Guillory, fast break points, lay in here, look for Terrace to take the butt. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah. Travel. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Here we go. Xavier Jones with the turnover. It's a 10 nothing lead with 4.23 to play in the opening quarter here. District championship game. Both teams advance to the regionals. Ball knocked away. It's going to be grabbed by Mount Lake Terrace. A rare turnover. And then early offense, and the three won't go. From outside, that three would not go for Chris Megan. And controlled again by Ferndale. They're just sweeping the board so far. They're, Mount Lake Terrace 0 for 8 from the field. And I think they've only had one offensive board. The one second chance look at the bucket. Megan got the picked up the uh, turnover. Missed the lay-in. Rebound controlled by Schlichting. Outlet pass up the floor. Early offense for Ferndale. No, they'll slow it down. No, they won't. Uh, outside three comes up short. Back up, no. Guillory comes through. He goes down. He lands hard. Actually, it wasn't Guillory that came through there. It was Damian Tony. And now they're still working it around. Ferndale trying to get the ball from Motlake Terrace. Wow. It's not to stop. It's not the greatest basketball you've ever seen. No, it's gotten a little <laughs> sloppy these last two minutes here. So really hoping... Uh, Damian Tony for Ferndale went down pretty hard. It looked like he might have he, popped his head on the floor there. He's still holding the back of his neck. Yeah, and I think they're going to tell him we got to look at him. Yep. Yeah, he's still in some distress, and I think there's – are they going to send him off? Oh, no, they were saying that – oh, it looked like they are saying that maybe Don Brown for Terrace was shooting. Wow. Oh. Okay. Okay. So, I guess he was because he's going to the free throw well, line. They he'll, said he was, and so he is. They'll try to get their first points of the ball game at the free throw line. Don Brown. No, it won't go. Brought rain. You got to believe <laughs> just one point. Take the lid off the bucket. Let's see if those Terrace Hawks can't get themselves back in charge here. The 6'4 sophomore, Don Brown. Oh, he... He double clutched and put it in, <laughs> and that brought, and, brought the defender. And Jason Guillory, <laughs> he he had to go all the way down to his hands to make sure he didn't touch the lane. But the, the refs actually had it as he did not touch early. So even had that been missed, here's Schlichting dribble drive along the left side, fadeaway jumper, no, kept alive by Mount Lake Terrace, but then knocked out of bounds by Schlichting, and it will be right over to Mount Lake Terrace, a 10-1 lead for Ferndale. 309 to play here in the opening quarter. Ferndale crashes those offensive boards hard, which is a fantastic thing. It also makes you a little bit susceptible to possibly running out on a defensive rebound by Terrace and going for a quick fast break. Outside three. Down it goes. Jeffrey Anaima. That and takes the uh, lid off go. the bucket and makes it a 10-4 ball game. Four unanswered. That's Schlichting. Dribbling in, putting it up, off the window and in. He went down. He thought maybe he got fouled. That's Connor Walker. I thought Connor might have some. Uh, yeah. He kind of got undercut a little bit there, and that's a, that's a point of emphasis to make sure that they have a chance to land. Yeah, you can go up. You've got to have a chance Absolutely. to land. Megan has it. They work Good, it down quick low. Oh, Don schlicking. Brown. Yeah. Man, that was great passing inside of that. Brown was going to have a clean, uncontested land. Schlichting swats over behind. Great job by Xavier Jones to grab that loose ball and put it up and in for Terrace. Makes it a double score at 6-12. to 12. Yeah, oh they're going to call an offensive yep. foul. And you know, one, I think he would have gotten it with the body, but he got him with the elbow. And, and, I, and I, I agree with that one. I thought the first one might have been a little ticky-tack. He's a bigger body handling the ball. Sometimes it looks worse than it is just because of the sheer size. But that one I definitely agree. I thought he reached out with that arm. Guillory, his second personal. Team foul number four. Foul line jumper is good. Uh, Jeffrey Anima. 
So that, that'll give him some points. That pulls him to within four at 12-8. And Guillory's got two fouls, Tom, but he's the heart and soul, just kind of handling the ball, everything they're doing here for Ferndale. He's a senior. His coach is going to let him play it. Schlichting with a miss. Zavion Jones with the rebound. Megan has it baseline. Off the glass, too hard. Kept it alive himself. Out for a three on the way. Air ball. Schlichting grabs it out of mid midair. Don Brown with that air ball. He's hearing from it from the uh, Ferndale faithful down below us to our left where the students are. They made the money-saving drive down from up by the Canadian border. Dribble drive right side of the key. Had the ball stripped, and then Schlichting had the ball stripped. Tony had it stripped first, and then Schlichting had it taken away. And now Motley Terrace on the break. The defender goes by, and stick to itiveness there for Anima, and he makes it a two point ball game at 12 10 inside a minute to play. Nifty little move by Anima trying to take out any defender blocking from behind by using the far side of the rim. Schlichting will load and fire. Rims off, no. Megan rebound for the Hawks. Here comes Mount Lake Terrace. Anima, outside three on the way. That one's going to be an air ball as well. It's, maybe it's a different background because a couple of air balls on that end. That was Jackson Dubiel to miss it there, and they'll slow it down. About a three-second differential. Shot clock, game clock. Maybe a background or maybe ill-advised shot too quick. <laughs> well, that could be too. Tony has the ball stripped away. Anima has it. Brings it up the floor. Had the ball nearly... And Ayima has it at the left wing. Corner jumper, three, rattles, goes, Terrace lead. Boy, didn't see that coming. Suddenly the, they've gone cold on the other end. Fade away, we're gonna, are we going to have a foul call? No. No. Nope. We're going to end that quarter. This could be interesting. This could be an interesting ball game. This is really interesting. We <laughs> talked about 10-0 for Ferndale to start the game. 13-2 run to answer that by Terrace. 13-12, the score. We're going to the second quarter right here on STSPN.com. frustrated with the high cost of heating and cooling our homes. At GNS, we are completely changing the way you keep your home comfortable. Because we are Snohomish County's premier Lennox dealer, we can design a perfect system for you, one that will save you a lot of money on your utility bill. The Lennox Home Comfort System creates the ideal home environment. Enjoy innovation in every season with precise, quietly efficient Lennox heat pumps that keep your life simply perfect. Call GNS Heating, Cooling, and Electric today or visit us at gsheating.com. Welcome back. Ready to go. Ferndale will throw it in to start the second quarter. 13 to 12 lead. 13 to run. It was 10 nothing Ferndale. And now the Golden Eagles down by one. That, those early shots, Joel, were falling. They sure were. They sure were. <laughs> Schlichting had a couple nice, nice from the far. Guillory had great drives that were attacking, getting in. Right now, Ferndale's looking a little out of sorts. I think they've had, gosh, turnovers. Maybe they're three of their last five possessions have resulted in turnovers. It's one of those things. Is Coach Coach Owens saying, hey, calm down. Calm down. Sixth turnover for the Ferndale Golden Eagles. Eagles. Connor Walker thought he thought he got fouled. I thought he had a <laughs> maybe a legitimate beef there. I, I, I said I wanted him to let him play. I, 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 maybe, maybe I should have qualified that a little more. Ferndale still, still staying in that 1-2-2 two, two zone. This looks like probably their base defense that they probably run off, and there's a lot of communication necessary to run this well. Got to talk through that. Really impressed by how they're doing it so far, though. So the Terrace Hawks will throw it in. Leading by one. So we've had one lead change in this ballgame. Ferndale was up 10-0. And then Motley Harris came storming back. Anaima has been the uh, main catalyst here. Megan has it in the corner. Three to shoot. Back out on Ima with the horn sounding. No, it didn't hit the rim. 
Vegan tried to get the rebound, but they, the whistle sounds, so the uh, shot clock violation, and it will be Ferndale Golden Eagles basketball. And we've seen Terrace, uh, obviously 13 points. They're up by one right now. They haven't had very much success against the half-court defense of Ferndale. A lot of in transition, secondary break transition points. Not a lot just in that half-court set against that 1-2-2. Two, two. Ferndale, the team with the ball, in their royal blue uniforms with the gold eagle wings. And outside, Jason Guillory will miss the three ball and controlled again by the Mount Lake Terrace Hawks. A little early offense, an air ball again for a three. The threes aren't working for Mount Lake Terrace on that end. Addison Maddox with the miss, but a steal back. Turnaround jumper, front iron, no good. Megan with the miss. Kept alive by the Ferndale Golden Eagles going in, and they're going to call an offensive foul. Yeah, and I thought the Ferndale player right there had an opportunity to give it to Guillory a little bit early, maybe two dribbles earlier, and then let Guillory get that pass back to him possibly. Just one of those, one of those things really want to make a play for his team. Jason Owens doesn't like the call either, the head coach of the... Uh, Ferndale Golden Eagles. Let's see what Terrace can do, though, on the offensive end here with the defense set and waiting for them. Ferndale's had a lot of success in this half court when their defense is able to get set. As they work it around. Motley Terrace with the basketball. Anaima to Megan. Ten to shoot. Anaima goes in. A little runner with the right hand. Won't go. The Ferndale Golden Eagles fighting each other for the loose basketball, and then got a, got a foul called in there. And we're finding out that number zero for the Ferndale Golden Eagles is Jules Terry, not in the uh, roster that we had. That's who got that earlier foul on in this end. And so, my, my guess is he's probably the replacement to Sean Morrison yep. on the roster, on the 12-man roster for playoffs. Bounce pass there. Now that Schlichting down, stops, pops, puts it up and in. Great bucket right there by Schlichting. I don't really like that. I've seen like the last three or four buckets, or sorry, the last three or four attempts by Ferndale have all been fadeaways. Instead of that strong aggressive move to the hoop, they've been fading away on that. Oh, boy. And there's a jumper and up and good by Vito Merkarchen. And it's a 16-14 lead again for Mount Lake Terrace, our third lead change of the ball game. You don't want that senior to get hot from outside. McCurchin right there putting that down. He's seen one or two fall all season long for sure. And that's Guillory again. He just likes to use that body, doesn't he? And he, <laughs> if, I, if I use it that effectively inside, yeah, right. so would I. 16 all tie, our first tie of the ball game. Here's a takeaway. Stolen away from... Tigran McCutcheon, who's, oh, excuse me, Jackson Doobie, I have the ball stolen. And this is Jason Guillory bouncing the basketball. And now Guillory has to be a little careful with those two fouls he's got. Here's Schlichting, outside three, won't go. Dubiel grabs the rebound. Up the floor they come. Anima goes through. That's a Euro step. That's good. Beautiful move. Euro and step scoop. And he is going to bring it. Jason Owens off the bench to call timeout for Ferndale. We'll step aside with four and a half minutes to play here in the first half. Terrace 18, Ferndale 16. Back with more after this. McDaniel's Do It Center is located in beautiful Snohomish, Washington. Locally owned and operated for over 40 years, they are proud to provide the Snohomish Valley with exceptional hardware, tools, lawn and garden, and sporting goods products. Their commitment to delivering legendary customer service and their outstanding employees continue to make McDaniel's the best and one of the most recognized Do It Best centers in the nation. Stop by and experience for yourself the difference between McDaniel's and the big box stores. Discover why so many people are choosing to shop at McDaniel's. Here we go, four and a half minutes to play in the first half. An 18-16 lead for Mount Lake Terrace. And Ema has been uh, red hot here in the second quarter. You know, we talked about Ferndale on that 10-0 run to start the game. And Ema has scored... 12 of the Terrace, 18 points after they got off that, that Schneid there being down with only zero points. So I get that lid off the bucket. They sure did. Nani Ima sure has uh, produced like we hoped and expected he might tonight. 
Here comes Jason Guillory with the basketball for the Ferndale Golden Eagles. 6'2", senior. Dribble drive to the baseline. Back and in. Ooh, they're going to call a reach-in foul here. Oh, boy. Anima. Oh, boy. Yeah, Guillory gets a, an award for acting in the I, uh, drama department. I'll tell you, I thought Anima got him across the arm. I, th I thought he got okay. across his arm to get that ball from him. Referee sure agreed with me there, and he did not like that Jeffrey Anima <laughs> wanted to disagree with him. Schlichting gets it on the inbounds. And they're going to call offensive foul here. It's going to be on Schlichting, I think. Is it? Did he? he <coughs> no, it's going to be on, on Schlichting. Mark Schlichting. And that was Jeffrey Anima right there that wore that charge. He was not happy about the foul call him just a second ago. I actually thought the ref had he put his whistle back in his mouth. And when you see a ref do that, oh boy, sometimes there's that T call coming right after. What a great job of the senior Anima to poise himself and wear that charge. And Schlichting picks up his first personal foul. Both teams with six team fouls. Outside three ball, and Ema, he's been hot, and he puts in a three, and it's 21-16. Mount Lake Terrace, after their biggest lead of the ball game, up by five points. Now a little answer on the other end, and Guillory will get it. Pulls him again to within three at 21-18. Coming up on three and a half minutes to play. And Anima, there he is again. With the left hand. No, no check it. Check pass it was right there to Xavion Jones. Xavion Jones with the bucket. And it's 23-18. Guillory, long left side. Tried to force it up. And got a whistle. And I think we're going to get Anima with the, with the foul here. That's his second personal. And the seventh team foul, so that puts Jason Guillory at the free throw line for the bonus. And the first one is good, and he'll get another. Both teams will advance to the regionals. That'll be announced tomorrow on Sunday by the WIAA. Next one by Guillory is good. Guillory's got 10 in the game, Tom. He and Annie Emer are kind of, kind of going a little head to head, guarding each other. Well, Fern, you know, Guillory's not guarding Annie Emer because oh, Ferndale's dropping into a man to man now. Look to see how Terrace handles this switch on defense right now, and they've only done it now that Jeffrey Annie Emer has gone to the bench. His playmaking ability is different now. Out by the logo. We'll swing it right side to Megan. Left side jumper, rims off no good, missed by Merkirchen, and it's going to be controlled by Ferndale. Guillory out of backcourt. Oh, run into there. Wow. <laughs> They're just hammering on each other. Here is Schlichting, offline no, follow-up no, follow-up number two no. So it was the first miss was by Schlichting, and then Walker had a chance at it. And then Guillory's going to get a chance to redeem everything with a couple of free throws coming up here. And that's Xavier Brown's first personal. Xavier Jones. Xavier Jones, excuse me. Xavier Jones' first personal. And the eighth team foul. First free throw is good. It's 23 21. Next one, 23 22 in favor of Mount Lake Terrace. Don Brown's going to check in. He's still looking over at uh, head coach Nayla Suit. Who am I going in for? Do they have? We're going to go with six. No, I think <laughs> the refs say no, no. Let's go with five tonight. <laughs> okay, here we go. Here comes Mount Lake Terrace leading by one. Again, Ferndale is going to stay man to man. Once you have Jeffrey Anima on the bench, Nayla Suit choosing to rest his star with two fouls. Little runner, no good. Missed by Megan. Ball goes out of bounds. Last touch by Mount Lake Terrace. It'll be Ferndale, Golden Eagles basketball. And, and Terrace isn't a one-man team, Tom. This isn't just Annie Ema's on the bench. Well, we're just going to give a point. No, right. no, no, not at all. But we're just making the point that tonight, what is he up to 15 points, I think, at the team's 23. He's definitely stirring the drink tonight for the Terrace Hawks. As Ferndale working it now, Jason Guillory. Gives it out back. Back, he gets it, turns, faces, and fires a foul line jumper off the front of the iron. No good. 
Rebound by Don Brown for Mount Lake Terrace. Here come the Hawks out of backcourt. They swing it left side to Megan at the left elbow. Back out to Tigran Merkarchin. He swings it to Jackson Dubiel. Calls the play. 13 on the shot clock. They go to Brown. Fade away. Good from 10 feet away. Don Brown makes it 25-23. Coming up on a minute and a half to play in this first half. The Northwest 3A District Championship game. Both teams advance. Up top it goes to Wells. Now right side to Walker. Closed off at the baseline. Tried it again. It was, the door was still closed. Guillory has it. 10 to shoot. He goes in. It's like a bowling ball. Man, a great job by Tigran McCurchin right there to wear that. Guillory saw it close off. He had three guys just come straight to him like a moz to a flame, but he kicked that ball but did not do it with his feet set, Tom. He yep. took to the air first. Uh, disappointing right there for three fouls for the star for Ferndale. Yeah, he goes to, goes to the bench with three personals. It was an offensive foul, so no shots. Minute five to play in the first half. Motley Terrace with a three-point lead. Stays a three-point lead as the miss is, is there, but it kept alive by Motley Terrace. Back out, that settles in for a two ball. That was Don Brown with it. And it's 27-22. Five-point lead for Motley Terrace. Equals their biggest lead of the ball game. Pull-up jumper on the way by Walker. Good switch for, Ooh. excuse me, Luke Wells. Ooh. Luke Wells with the bucket. 27-24. That, that was a sweet shooting stroke right there, Tom. Yeah. It, Real like he, that. Come off that screen, high ball. Quick release. Absolutely. Down low they go, Zevion Jones along the baseline. They'll swing it back out. Boy, I, yeah, oh, he, yeah, he did. He I, was undecided. <laughs> we, Chris, all, we all saw that same thing. Uh oh, 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 and then there's a whistle. Yeah, he was undecided. I could take a three here, or coach would really like me to go in a little bit closer. I, well, really, I really like when the refs uh, solidify what we also saw. Yeah, yeah. I, I told you. Yeah, absolutely. Shot clock is dead. 16 to play in the half. Walker dribble along the left side. Gets the defender off his feet, and the three <laughs> balls up by Schlichting. <laughs> he put that up trying <laughs> to draw the foul. And Jackson Dubio went high in the air, and he still, I've still got the ball there, dude. And here's a fadeaway jumper, fadeaway all the way to the floor by Chris Megan. And at the end, as we add it all up, Joel Boyer, <laughs> it's a 27-27 tie. Let's go down to Nalen Sood. All right, thank you very much, guys. Coach, 10-0 deficit to start the game. I kept looking over at you. You seemed composed. You seemed very relaxed. I'm sure internally you weren't. What were your thoughts? And you didn't even have to call a timeout. No, no, you got to trust the 12 weeks, and we don't like to get behind like that. But, you know, what am I going to do? Call them out, call them, ream them out. They know what they need to do and figure things out. And we just got to play 32 minutes. You know, and right there, it's just like, guys, keep chipping away. You know, they know what they are. I was going to say in a timeout, they know what they need to do. There's no magic words. They don't want it to get too far away from us. Luckily, it did, and we got back into it. But you can see it's quite a dogfight right now. We've talked about it before, you and I, but I don't think I've ever seen Jeffrey Anima put a team on his back quite the way he did in that comeback. Yeah, yeah, he did that, but that's Jeffrey. He competes. Uh, he's a battler. we got to get everybody on board. He has that behind him. So we're looking forward to the second half. Hey, last question. What's the message to the team at halftime? Uh, just keep playing for 16 minutes. Uh, we got to guard them harder. Um, we got to mix some things up offensively. 50, you know, we're on track. 54 wouldn't be bad, but we can't give them 54. So we got to do a better job cleaning some things up defensively and keep them from getting in the paint. Thanks, Coach. All right. There you go. Thanks very much to Dale and Sue for stopping by with Steve Willis down on the floor. I like that. L little math there. <laughs> I'd like to score 54. Where? We can't let them score 54. How do you get 54? Oh, yeah. Oh, 27 yeah. times two. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, and you talk about just nailing Sue, just so calm. And I love hearing what he said. They don't need me to call them out and room them. They know what they need to do. You trust the 12 weeks. I really like that saying right there. Ooh, that, trust the that 12 weeks. Into the, that's going into the bank, isn't it? We might use that next week at the state <laughs> tournament, Tom. Who knows? So we're at the end of the first half here. It's the Ferndale Golden Eagles 27, the Motlake Terrace Hawks 27. Second half action coming up right here on STSBN.com. You have to be a good individual first before you can be a good team player. I know for a fact how bad Hell Week is. I went through it a couple times. It's probably the most brutal military training anybody can go through. So everybody to my left and everybody to my right, they've been through this. So I know mentally 
you know, these individuals are extremely hard. And when stuff gets bad in, you know, in any situation, I know these guys have my back. SWIC is an acronym, and it stands for Special Warfare Combatant Craft Crewman. You know, you, you can stand across from the guy and say, you know what, he's got your back. And, you know, that's the guy you're counting on. If, if something goes wrong, he's going to be there. In the end, we're, we're fighting for each other. Wolfpack, this is Witch Doctor. Request immediate hot extract. Take it on. Here on a team, you know, about 22 of us on the boat. You know them personally, so you know exactly whose life you have in your hands. Everyone's come together, and everyone's sole mission is to do their job individually as best they can to benefit everyone else on the boat. I got a brotherhood, and it's a, it's a real brotherhood, and it's a loyal and honest brotherhood, and that, that's what matters. Come with us. The new generation. The next level. Sending it big. Oh, oh my goodness. You're in for a good run. Let's go. Come with us to the track, to the trails, to the slopes, to the surf, to the fight, to the race. Look at this! To the 4 a.m. starts, training harder, pushing further, hitting back, hard. To the fans, to the followers, and the haters. Come with us to the blood. To the sweat and the broken bones. You rehab. We never quit. We never give up. We take control. To the world titles. To the world's first. The world's best. UFC Strawweight Champion. Come with us. We're just getting started. It's going to be so much fun. I promise you. Tyler and Matt, water lines. Hey, how you doing? We're here in the U District on a Thursday, replacing all the buried galvanizers in the line. Each of our homes depend upon their connection to water and sewer. Hey, we're under the porch, putting in all new pecs, replacing all the galvanized, including the hose bit. Over time, these lines age, change, and break down. We're making our last connection. That's capping an old galvanized water line, and we should be done for the day. Our water line team can help to make sure your connection runs smooth, healthy, and clean. Do It Center is located in beautiful Snohomish, Washington. Locally owned and operated for over 40 years, they are proud to provide the Snohomish Valley with exceptional hardware, tools, lawn and garden, and sporting goods products. Their commitment to delivering legendary customer service and their outstanding employees continue to make McDaniels the best and one of the most recognized Do It Best centers in the nation. Stop by and experience for yourself the difference between McDaniels and the big box stores. Discover why so many people are choosing to shop at McDaniels.
Welcome back to Everett Community College, Larry Walker Court. Thanks for being with us here on this Saturday night. Halftime of the boys' district championship game for the 3A. It's 27-27 all. Mount Lake Terrace and Ferndale. Buddy Patrick has a look at all the first half numbers. We'll start with the Mount Lake Terrace Hawks as a team shooting 11 for 30 from the field. 4 for 11 from three-point range. 1 for 2, just uh, two free throws in that first half for the Terrace Hawks. Leading all scorers, Jeffrey An Anamia with 15 points, five turnovers for the Hawks. For the Ferndale Golden Eagles here in the first half, 29 of 22 shooting from the field, two of nine from three-point range. And we're ready to go down to Steve with the head coach of the Ferndale Golden Eagles. Coach Jason Owens right now. Coach, 10 nothing run to start off the game and then a little bit of a swing. What was the biggest takeaway from the first half for you? Uh, for me, being tied at halftime in a district championship game shows that we're mentally there, being 10, up 10-0. We're fighting for what we want, and I'm excited for the second half. Who wouldn't be? You took a little bit of their momentum away. You scored the last five points. So what was the message at halftime? Message was you guys are doing a great job. We keep doing the same thing. Make sure you power down. That's seven charges. we, we got to take care of that issue. All right, Coach, thanks for your time. Best of luck. Thank you very much. Golden Eagles, Gilroy with 12 points, 11 points for the quarterback, Mark Schlichting. Eight turnovers for the Golden Eagles. We mentioned the uh, four all-league football players for the Ferndale Golden Eagles. All-Wesco linebacker, Zevion Jones for the Mount Lake Terrace Hawks. And Addison Maddox, this isn't a bad... Uh, Boyer, this is you. He's going to pitch for the University of Hawaii. Go over there and play baseball? <laughs> Absolutely. I'm not sure how that's me, but I would love to go pitch for the University of Hawaii and live there. That'd be fantastic. How's your 90 mile an hour fastball? <clears throat> it's it's uh, I'm working through a shoulder issue right now, but it'll be back. <laughs> yeah. So um, what you're saying, non-existent? I've been working through a shoulder issue for about the last 39 years, <laughs> yeah. I think. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. The one thing I want to point out, Buddy Patrick talked about those stats right there. Three fouls on Jason Guillory, yeah. and that's what Coach Jason Owens for Ferndale talked about there. Seven charges, and I didn't know we were up to seven, but fantastic for him, unfortunately, for his team. But that is absolutely one thing he's saying. we got to power down, really saying be under control when we attack the rim, finish those finish those drives on two-foot jump stops before the guy waiting for the charge there. Guillory, though, is in the starting lineup here to start the second half. Mount Lake Terrace basketball looking for a backdoor lob. Didn't do it. Instead, they go back to Anima, and he'll start the offense. We'll swing it over right side to Megan. Now they dribble along. Ooh, there's going to be a tie-up there. Anima went down. It's going to be a tie-up. It's going to be alternating possession on the jump ball, and it's going to go over to the Ferndale Golden Eagles. And that was the first possession that Ferndale was in a man-to-man -man with Anima on the court, but they were doing a really, uh, really keen into where he is oh. with the ball and making sure that oh. they were getting him when they needed to. That oh, was oh, oh, oh. absolutely beautiful. On a dime, they threw it down to Guillory in for the bucket, and it makes a Ferndale lead here at 29-27. But the answer on the other end was Zevion Jones, and the bucket ties it up again at 29. Beautiful drop step by Jones. Too high off the window, but a foul call. Walker has it, and he's going to go to the free throw line. Tied at 29. Both teams advance into the regionals. The official telling <laughs> telling uh, Coach Nalen Sue to get behind the uh, coaching line, and he's got a few words for the, for the official. Maddox picks up his third. Maddox, his third personal foul. Free throw here. Walker offline, no. The referee, Rick Dunstan, Jared Fleury, and Brandon Mullen here on this Saturday evening. The girls' championship coming up. It's the, the weekend, Silly baby! Cup. Arlington and Stanwood. 30-29 Ferndale by one. Oh, boy. Anima, oh, Get back. Almost, yeah, almost oh. had the ball stolen away. Dribble drive in. Too hard. No. McCurchin with the miss. Rebound controlled by the Ferndale Golden Eagles. Give it down to the baseline, off the window. He just took it. He just took the ball and said, I'm going to the hoop. Try to stop me. And Damian Tony did and scores the basketball. And Ferndale has a three-point lead. Well, he went right at Addison Maddox, who has those three fouls. Maddox had to give ground, give ground. Really couldn't contest that shot out of fear of getting his fourth foul. Megan with the miss. Rebound 
was knocked out of bounds. Rebound was grabbed by Schlichting. He tried the corner pass. It was knocked out of bounds by Megan. It'll be Ferndale basketball. And you can just see there's a little bit of a frustration by some of these Terrace Hawks. Understandable. They got a couple of guys with some fouls. Oh, they're going to call it an illegal screen, I think. And this is going to be, is that Guillory? No, that's no. on Tony. Okay. On Damian Tony right second. there. All right. I thought I saw. I, I thought I saw three a, right there. Yeah, yeah, we're seeing the mirror image, the reverse side of those <laughs> fingers, but he called that on 25 right there. Okay, and so for him, second. that's his second personal foul, first, first team of the second half. Mount Lake Terrace basketball in the white uniforms moving to our right as they work around the perimeter here. 14 to shoot. Now back in, Anima goes in. A little scoop lay and tried it. Wouldn't get it. Got his own rebound. Double pump. Put back up and in. Stuck to it. Anima scores it. And it's a one-point ball game. Ferndale by one. Now Guillory, kind of an underhanded pass to Schlichting. Back to Guillory. He'll back out of trouble. Tony coming up to set that high pick for him as well with Schlichting doing a double high pick. Guillory using that body to give himself some room, but it's going to be picked off. Stolen away here by Mount Lake. T oh, wow. No call there as the ball goes up. Schlichting was down. He was just smack run into by Zevion Jones. That's your linebacker right there. Linebacker well, and the quarterback. And Ferndale, <laughs> uh, they got talked to at halftime by their coach about making sure they power down and go with those charges called. Now, all of a sudden, they try to wear one and don't get the call. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely some up-in-arms teammates over there. And they answer on the other end with Damian Tony with the bucket, and it's 34-31, Ferndale by three. Megan. Now they swing it over to McCurchin. Now back out between the circles. They'll start the offense. They're just working the perimeter down to 10 to shoot. Megan has it along the left side of the key. Puts it up too hard off. Tap up, no. Third time, no, and a foul call. Megan missed. His tap up was missed. And then Maddox was there. He missed, and he'll have to go to the free throw line. Addison Maddox. Yeah, let's take a look at it. Oh, this is going to hurt watching a second time. Oi, boom. Well, he and Schlichting got his, got his leg kind of counterneath underneath yeah. Jones. He went down. I thought that might be a, a painful one. Good to see both players up. No ill effects from that. First free throw good. Makes it a two-point ball game. Maddox, second one. Swish. 34-33. 4.40 to play in the third quarter. The district championship game for the Class 3A. Everybody with their sights set on the Tacoma Dome. Jason Guillory. Deep in the corner it goes. Schlicking again, but the ball taken away. Grabbed by Mount Lake Terrace. Hawks with it. Maddox in the corner. Megan. He kind of does a little spin move. Ball swatted. I'm not sure. Did Damian Tony get his hand up? No, that was or Luke was that Wells Luke from Wells. behind. Okay. And... <laughs> I was watching the last free throw that, that Addison Maddox was shooting. Megan and, uh, Megan and Luke Wells were, you know, guarding each other and standing pretty tight to each other all about three-quarter court away. I wouldn't doubt if there's a little bit of a they're, – they're into it right now. Ooh. They're going to call the blocking foul here. And Ema put down the shoulder, and then falling down is Luke Wells. Second. And Luke Wells is going to pick up the foul. That's his second personal Third. foul. Third team foul. Good sportsmanship by Dubiel picking up Wells right there. Here's Jones. Rattles off. No. Zevion Jones with a miss. Put back. No. Oh, foul man. called. And it looks like Luke Wells might have just picked up his third foul right there in the same possession. Not a good stat. His second consecutive foul it is. Luke Wells, a six-foot senior, picks up the foul for the Golden Eagles. This time it will be free throws again. Fouls, fourth team. Three personals, fourth team foul. And Jackson Dubiel at the free throw line clunks the first one. So all he can do now is tie the score. Airborne and no, he can't. He coulda, he didn't. Coulda. 
<laughs> so inside four minutes now to play in the third quarter. 34-33 Ferndale. Schlichting plays catch with Wells down to Guillory. Outside, boy, oh. wide, wide, wide open, but he can't hit it. That's a miss by Walker. Put back, no. And the rebound controlled again by Ferndale. Sweeping the boards here. Back to the basket there is Walker. S little step through move a couple times. And somebody's going to get called for the foul. Maddox, well, I think. If this is Maddox, this is his fourth foul. And he's a pretty good inside presence for the Hawks. Let's see who they get it on. Yeah. Yep. And Nalen suit is not happy. He's no. bad. And Nalen is about as cool as it comes when it comes to, <laughs> to coaches. Really doesn't get two, but... Obviously, four fouls. He's going to have to bring Don Brown off the bench for Madison Maddox, who's got that fourth with 3.30 left to play in the third quarter. But Ferndale can't take advantage of the free throw line. Connor Walker with the miss. And, and this Maddox is, goes to the bench with four personals. And we have some of the some starters, some definitely not just stars, but some of the, the stars are both teams having to look at some, free, at some, uh, foul, some foul issues. Yep. Yeah, thank you. 35-33, Ferndale by two. We've had two ties and three lead changes in this ball game. Terrace is led by as much as five. Ferndale had a 10 nothing lead, pitching a shutout, 10 nothing early on in this ball game. That quickly dissipated. Ferndale back to that 1 2 2 that they were in a whole. Well, uh, yeah, that's. Oh, 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 oh he's okay. lucky. Oh, you know he's what? lucky. He's that, ca called for the travel. Yep. That's a turnover, but he wasn't called for the offensive foul. He lowered the shoulder, the he head. Well, and Guillory got called on that exact same thing in the first half for lowering his shoulder twice. They got called on charges. He did a fantastic job wearing that one, but I guess one of the few times you say, hey, good job good, good, good job traveling before you got called for the foul. I was expecting the official to put up his hand <laughs> I, like uh, uh, yeah. targeting. Uh, oh, boy, I thought he <laughs> was going to call it. Yeah. yeah. Ball knocked out of bounds. Turnover by Ferndale. It's Mount Lake Terrace ball. Three minutes to play, third quarter. And the Golden Eagles with a 35-33 lead. Only two points for Anaima for the Hawks this quarter so far in this first five minutes of the quarter. Zabion Jones with it. 15 early. <laughs> Anaima, Don Brown in the corner. He says, you know, if nobody's going to look at me, I'm going to shoot it. He misses, kept alive by Mount Lake Terrace. Reload, fire, three on the way. No, missed by Dubiel and controlled by Ferndale. Here come the Golden Eagles. Guillory, spin move, banker, good. And it's a 37-33 lead for Ferndale, 16. up by four. 16 points in the ballgame. And I'll tell you, what a great job at Guillory that time. First half, he went in there with not, not really keeping his feet necessarily and got called for a couple offensive fouls and charges. That time, very under control, spin move, two feet, jumped off two feet, landed on both. Great job by him, what his coach said at halftime. In the corner they go. Savion Jones shoots about a 14, 15, 16 footer. Won't go. Back out for a three on the way. He got fouled, I thought, going by. And then they're going to call a foul on the, uh, as Anima, I thought Guillory got him as he let go of the ball I, for that three. I thought he might have right there, but they got Schlichting on the rebound, which I, uh, he had inside position on yep. that. Wow. Oh, I don't know. I didn't I didn't see the foul, but maybe there's one in there. Schlichting was called for the foul. That's his third personal. Fifteen foul. Hook shot. Up and good. Don Brown with the bucket. And it's 37-35. Two-point lead for the Golden Eagles. Ferndale with the ball. Coming well, up on a minute and a half to play in the third quarter. At the end of the third, we're going to have to run down the, the foul issues for both teams, yep. just knowing that <laughs> we got a lot of personals on on both sides. That's Schlichting. Seven to shoot. Guillory spin move. Banker in. Wow. Right around the defender or Gosh. the would-be defenders. Back out to a four-point lead. Just Release so under down there for a oh, three. Oh, boy. Huge three for Vito McCurchin. And uh -oh. a foul called. Put out the wing. So says the official. And that's going to be Jason Guillory. Yeah. Uh oh. That's his fourth. Watch him after. What? Yeah. Oh, gosh, Tom, as we watch that replay. Let's see, let's see, see it again. I dislike that call more and more. This is just locked up trying to get Ooh, through. I don't know. He pushed him. Banker up and in. 
And that's that was going to be good for Xavier Jones. Yeah. We, we were watching the replay, didn't see who <laughs> Xavier Jones. And here's a steal. Same guy, step through. No, he goes to the floor, ball out of bounds. And it will be still in the possession of Mount Lake Terrace. It's getting rough and tumble. Looking to throw it in. Mount Lake Terrace. Anima. Willie? Yeah. They dared him to shoot. He says, yeah, you know what? If you're going to dare me, I'm going to do it. Rebound grabbed down by Jules Terry for Ferndale. And they will slow. He was going to slow things down. And the Mount Lake Terrace says, no, you're not. Oof. Oh, and a timeout called. Quickly a timeout called here by Mount Lake Terrace. We'll keep it right here. It's a 30 second timeout. Reminder we still have the 3A girls championship coming your way later tonight. The Arlington Eagles of Stanwood Spartans. It seemed like they played like 19 times this year. <laughs> like every other week, you play Arlington plays Stanwood. It, it feels like, but I think that's across a few different sports. Yeah. Sometimes the boys, the girls. Let's go to uh, Steve Willits if we can. Doing a little bit of checking on the chat that's going on here on YouTube. I thought you would like this one, Tom. Whoever is running the Snohomish County basketball officials posted this. Six of the Mount Lake Terrace High School basketball players have actually gone through referee training and are planning on officiating basketball games in middle school leagues this spring. We don't have enough officials. Good for them, giving back to their community and enjoying the sport that they love. That's awesome. Fantastic. Yeah, we've got the McCurchin brothers, uh, Jackson Dubio, Mason Town, Jeffrey Anniema, and Addison Maddox. Fantastic. So giving back to the game. There you go. 18 to shoot. Ferndale with the basketball. Jules Terry. Top of the key to Tony. Now to Schlichting. Back to Tony again. Back out for a three on the way. Short no good by Luke Wells. Reload here one more time. Schlichting buries it and makes it 42-40. Get up. Two-point lead. Get up. And Ema goes in, loses the ball. The ball goes out of bounds. Horn sounds. End of the third quarter. Stay with us. We got a lot of basketball to play. After three quarters, it's the Ferndale Golden Eagles 42. The Mount Lake Terrace Hawks 40. Somebody's going to take home the Nets after we're done right here on SDSPN.com. McDaniel's Do It Center is located in beautiful Snohomish, Washington. Locally owned and operated for over 40 years, they are proud to provide the Snohomish Valley with exceptional hardware, tools, lawn and garden, and sporting goods products. Their commitment to delivering legendary customer service and their outstanding employees continue to make McDaniel's the best and one of the most recognized Do It Best centers in the nation. Stop by and experience for yourself the difference between McDaniel's and the big box stores. Discover why so many people are choosing to shop at McDaniel's. We are all frustrated with the high cost of heating and cooling our homes. At GNS, we are completely changing the way you keep your home comfortable. Because we are Snohomish County's premier Lennox dealer, we can design a perfect system for you. One that will save you a lot of money on your utility bill. The Lennox Home Comfort System creates the ideal home environment. Enjoy innovation in every season with precise, quietly efficient Lennox heat pumps that keep your life simply perfect. Call GNS Heating, Cooling, and Electric today or visit us at gsheating.com. So last night we were talking on the air and earlier today as well, Joel. A little confusion on the floor. There's three three-point lines. Yep. The high school is the one you can barely see. The women's college is the white one, and the red one is the men's college. So... A little confusion. Sometimes you have high school players. The referees, I don't think, really get confused by it. But those high school players sometimes see that red line and think, well, on my court, the only, there's only one line out here. So sometimes you get some guys pulling some deep threes that maybe they're not quite ready to pull, thinking that they're three feet closer, actually. Although some of the games we've been seeing, guys have been shooting it from the logo. So Yep. It's a dribble drive in, lay it up and good. Was that McCurchin? That Dubiel. It, Dubiel. It, no, excuse me, Dubiel who had it. He Sliced his way through there and ties the score at 42. Elevating for a three is Schlichting. No. Who gets the rebound? There's a little tie up there. We're tied at 42, our third tie. Going to be keeping it here at Ferndale Ball. Note, we got Jason Guillory has checked back into the game at, for Ferndale at the quarter. 
He's leading them in points, but he's also leading them with those four fouls. Yeah. Coach Jason Owen saying, you're a senior. I trust you. I trust you. Please let me still trust you at the end of this game. Schlicht in quick release oh. and buries the three. <laughs> 17. He's got 17 points in the ball game, and it's a three-point lead for the Golden Eagles. He doesn't care what line he's shooting no. from, Tom. <laughs> He'll use no, he's number got one, space, number two, or number up. three. It doesn't yep. matter. It doesn't matter. Now Motley Terrace will try to answer here. Down by three. To Don Brown they go. Short arms at no, and the rebound controlled by Ferndale's Connor Walker. And playing with those four personal fouls, Jason Guillory brings it across the logo. And this is too early to take the air out of the ball and stuff, but I really like that Ferndale's pretty methodical with their possessions. Schlichting shoots the three, misses. That was not very methodical in that no. possession, but the, my point still <laughs> remains. Off the window, no for Anaima, and he's going to. Oh boy, go might to the be Wells' line. fourth. Yep. It will be. Wells' fourth. Gosh. Luke Wells picks up his fourth Look, personal foul. Gillery and Wells with four, three for Schlichting, and, and four for Major. Let's, let's, let's go to Buddy Patrick. He's got the uh, foul totals. Give them to us. For Ferndale, four for Wells, four for Gilroy, and Schlichting with three for Mount Lake Terrace, four for uh, Addison Maddox as well. First free throw good for Jeffrey Anaima. And Addison Maddox just checked in with those four fouls for the Terrace Hawks. Anaima, as I look over my statistician's shoulder here, he's only got two fouls. So you, as we're talking kind of Schlichting and Guillory is kind of our big scorers right now for Ferndale. Anaima, only two. Bodes well for the Hawks. He can be a little more aggressive on the defensive end. He's got 19 points and pulls Motley Terrace to within one at 45-44. 6-10 to play in the basketball game. They're going to they're gonna call a foul here. Chris Megan doesn't like it. No. He kind of bounced the ball hard, and, but the official says, yeah, you put up, you put up the arm. And Chris Megan... He, he does that one more time, bouncing that ball yeah. that hard. Yeah. That's his second or first personal foul for Megan. Third team foul. Looking across court, wide open. Who's going to shoot the three? It's going to be a miss, but getting his own rebound there is Tony, and he goes to the floor. So he missed the three, missed his, off his own rebound. And then the third time, he gets fouled. So we'll have to earn him at the stripe. Looks like Jeffrey Anaima with his third personal, I believe. Yeah, just as you said, he only has two. Well, <laughs> guess what? He well, just I put said he could be one. a little more aggressive. But well, that, that <laughs> I was it. I don't think Nalen Sood came off the bench pretty quick there to say, hey, you got three. Don't get four. <laughs> First free throw good. Damian Tony, the junior, 6-2. And I don't know what our free throw stats are quite, but I know at halftime there were seven of eight for Ferndale. They're probably continuing that. A lot of made free throws here. Not... 11 of 14 from the free throw line the Ferndale Eagles are for the game. Great shooting. Exactly what you want to see late in the season. Championship game. Free throws mean everything to a team. Three-point ball game. Motley Terrace down by three. They have the basketball moving to our right in the white uniforms. High off the window. No good by Zevion Jones. Ball goes out of bounds. Last touch by Motley Terrace. It'll be Ferndale ball. 5.25 to play. And here you go, you see Terrace putting a little more pressure up here on the inbounds, trying to get him a little more in the backcourt. I don't think it's going to be some full-blown press as much as they just want to make him think here. They're making it tough to inbound the ball. It's nice when you have a point guard like Guillory, you can just throw it up there and he's going to go get it. Yeah. Makes it really easy. So here's Schlichting with it between the circles. To Wells. Back to Schlichting again. So they work it in the corner. Up fake for the three. Didn't take it was Tony. He still has it back to the basket. Nine seconds on the shot clock. The runner goes and one for Luke Wells. Wow. He just, just like a hot knife through butter, that one. Wow. Yeah, the, the defenders, it's his second personal foul on, on Jones. On Xavier Jones, yeah. Can we see that one again, Todd? Just watch him blow by these defenders. Let's wait for the free throw. It's good. 
And oh, Addison, <laughs> Addison Maddox got a little lucky on that. He tried to wear that charge with the foul. All he'd been called on on Brown. Yeah, we had bodies on the or floor. On Xavier Jones, excuse me, yeah. on Jones. Anaima, swing it out. Pull up jumper on the way. Too hard, no good. Getting his own rebound there is McCurchin. Going through, laying good. Nicely done there by Zevion Jones. Timeout on the floor, called by Motleg Terrace. We step out with 4.34 to play here in the basketball game. It's Ferndale, 50, Motleg Terrace, 46. Back with more right here at STSPN.com. Four minutes and 34 seconds to play. Inbounds here for Ferndale. They lead it by four in the district championship game. Tom Lafferty along with Joel Boyer. Steve Willits here, along with Buddy Patrick on the stats. Sarah and Todd Elvig at the controls. A whole cast of thousands down in the truck here on this STSPN telecast. And a foul is going to be called. Kind of shrugging his shoulders is Chris Megan. He's going to go to the bench, and Jackson Dubia will come in. Megan has three personals. The sixth team foul, so no shots here, but a fresh 30 on the shot clock for Ferndale with the lead. Jason Guillory with the basketball on top of the Spartans or the Trojan logo. No, it's not Spartans, it's the Trojans. <laughs> travel. Oh, that's yep, going to be a travel. Yep, yep, good call. And Coach Jason Owens, I, I love seeing the coaches that don't look at the referee when the call is made. They look at the player and try to coach the player, <laughs> coach the mistake, as opposed to complaining to the official. Right. Because he looked at it and goes, yeah, you did. Yeah, you, yes. you, you traveled. He's like, keep your foot down when you make that pump fake. Terrace with the basketball. Trailing by four. Back into the zone here. Ferndale Eagles in a 2-3 now. Anima pull up jumper from the foul line. Too hard. Offline. No good. Rebound grabbed by Walker for the Eagles. And it's Golden Eagles basketball leading by four with coming up on three and a half minutes to play. And a timeout called by Ferndale and their head coach, Jason Owens. We step out with 3.35 to play in the game. It's Ferndale 50, Montlake Terrace 46. Back with more after this. And welcome back. We're crowd spotting. Who's in the crowd here? Lots of folks have been here. Good crowd here tonight for this game. I would expect Arlington Stanwood will uh, draw a good crowd for the girls game coming up here. Scheduled, up. For, scheduled for an 8 o'clock start. That's, that's probably not going to happen. Maybe. Because there's going to be net cutting coming up here. Oh, Ferndale. Three on the shot. Three yeah. on the shot clock right now. 3.18 to play. Inbounds here for Ferndale underneath their own basket. Guillory will throw it in. As Joel said, three on the shot clock. 
Get it in. Schlichting knows. He'll shoot. He'll fire the three. Well, I thought it was going to go in on the second bounce. Didn't. Rebound was grabbed. Grabbed there by Damian Tony, And then a foul called. And I think get, he's going to the free throw line. Xavier Jones right there. It's going to be a one and one That's his third personal foul. Seventh team foul, so bonus time now the rest of the way. Oh. Hold on. Two shots, they're saying. Ooh, okay. Oh, he was in the act of shooting. Wow. Thought he was in the act of rebounding, but hey, I've been wrong a lot before. So <laughs> Damian Tony, first free throw. Uh-uh. Maybe he was in the act of shooting. You know, when you got Todd Elvig over here, let me see a replay. The next free throw, no, but the rebound kept alive by Malik Terrace, but grabbed by Ferndale. Oh, so. a fresh 30. They can take 30 more off the clock. Only a four-point lead. You obviously don't want to just take the air out, but they really want to get a set right now. Jason Owens is coaching hard, saying, let's get, oh, Ooh, gosh. Almost thrown it away. Walker has it. Now he gets it, rattles it out. No, gets his own rebound. It won't go. Now body's on the floor, and a foul's going to be called. No, oh, they're going to say out of bounds. Just out of bounds. A lot of, a lot a lot of, of aggressive, a lot yeah. of contact. I don't mind I don't mind the no call. It's Damian Tony kind of came flying in there. Damian Tony did not like the no call, but, no. Uh, you know. So it's going to be out of bounds for Mount Lake Terrace. In the, if a player fouls out, they foul out. If they, yeah. if they use all five fouls, they use all five. But as a fan, you like seeing the, the players, you start the game, be able to finish the game. Right. Give it off. Little runner. Nice pass there. Got it to Zevion Jones. And we have a timeout called, I think, by Mount Lake Terrace. Yep. As Nalen Sood calls a 30-second timeout. We'll keep it right here. I tell you what, Nalen Sood down by two, two and a half minutes to play. Uh, Nalen Sood's been here a, a long lot. time. Yep, yep. He's been coaching at Terrace since when I played back in the day. We're not going to name the day. It was just back in the day, okay? But Nalen Sood has been in this game before. He's been through these wars. This is nothing new to him, the confidence. But every time you're here, it's with a different team. Right. You obviously have players that are seniors or juniors from teams before, but with a different team, with a different look, with a different kind of attitude. So while he's been here, he hasn't coached these players in this game before. It's always a hair different. So see how your players react to that coaching. So here we go. Jason Guillory out of backcourt for the Golden Eagles. They lead it by two. Back to the basket there is Walker. Boy, he's been the key for about an hour and a half. And no call. Ball goes out of bounds. Last touch by Ferndale. I looked down. I looked up. He was still there. He was still standing right on glued to that W of the NWAC logo. Yeah. And then he threw it out of bounds to Schlichting. That's, yeah, that's that was right. a good year. One, two, two zone by the Eagles. Here's a chance for the Hawks now to take the lead with a three, at least tie it. Oh, there's a turnabout's fair play right back with a bad pass out of bounds by Montlake Terrace. It'll be Ferndale basketball. 2.05 left. And they'll throw it in. Guillory from Schlichting. Guillory dribbles out, out of backcourt to Damian Tony. Bounces it. Gives it to Wells. Wells to Guillory again. Foul called. And they're going to help Guillory up. The foul's going to be on Anaima. And that's his fourth personal foul. Jason Guillory, eighth team foul. Jason Guillory at the free throw line for the Golden Eagles. Inside now, two minutes to play in the game. A two-point ball game. Stays a two-point ball game. And then the ball is knocked away from Damian Tony. Step through, move. What a move! What a move by Zevion Jones. And it's a he's got 14 points in the ball game and our fourth tie in this game. It's a 50-50 ball game. And it is a 50-50 ball game. Faking it underneath there is Walker. Finds Guillory. Ball knocked away. Foul call. Jones will be called for the foul. That's his fourth personal. Yeah, Zevion Jones picks up the foul. 
Motley Terrace, three players with four personal fouls. Three starters, Addison Maddox, Jeffrey Anima, Xavier Jones, all with four. You got a minute 24 to play. I'll tell you, the guy who just seems to calm down as the game is sped up, Jason Guillory. Oh, can't get the free throw to drop. That's we remain tied at 50. Minute 20 to play. Ferndale still in that 1 2 2. Let's see if Anaima might try to do something special here for the Hawks. So they swing it right side. Dubiel across the top of the key. Anaima baseline closed off. Still closed off. Tries a wraparound pass to Jones. He does. It's in. Great pass. I don't know how he got it to him. He threaded the needle. Zavion Jones had four points, Joel, at halftime. He's got 16 in the ball game now. And you know, you see Anima had 15 at half, only four in the second half. You kind of talk about guys putting teams on their back. Sometimes it's for a game, sometimes it's for a half. Anima really carried the load big time for the Hawks in that first half. You see Zavion Jones right now stepped up big time, 12 second half points to put his team on that last bucket, put him up by two. Boy, Tom, we're in for a good finish right here. We're in for a great finish. We're at 53.4 seconds to go. Still to come, Arlington and Stanwood on the girls' side. Earlier today on the boys' side, Shortcrest stays alive. They'll head to the regionals with a 59-56 win over Stanwood. And Arlington ousted Cascade from tournament consideration. Arlington 70, Cascade 54. Let's go down to the floor to Steve Willits. Yeah, Doug Podrowski from MLT News just pointed something out to me. Ferndale has had 50 points since the 5:01 mark, and not only that, 0 for 4 from the free throw line. Two of those were the front end of one and ones. Oh, not just 0 for 4. In, in our book, we call it 0 for 6 if you're missing the front end of those one and ones. That's Steve, right. <laughs> good good reporting down there. <clears throat> let's let's flip that coin over and say Ferndale was up 50 to 46, and they haven't scored since the five minute mark. They haven't scored for over four minutes but they're only down two. So their defense is still held, their rebounding is still held, but yeah, Ferndale's gotta put, some, gotta put some points in. Ball kicked out of bounds on the inbounds by Jackson Dubiel, so it'll be inbounded here. Luke Wells, right in front of the uh, Mount Lake Terrace bench across from us. Ball knocked away, ball stolen. Grabbed by Dubiel, he gets it, lay it, good! He stuck to it, and he got it, and it's back to a lead for the Mount Lake Terrace Hawks. Up 54-50, four-point lead. Guillory, three on the way. Rattles off, no. Zavion Jones, the rebound. 30 seconds to play. And we go to the other end after the foul called here on Ferndale. We have foul shots coming in. They're going to call this on one Tony. on Damian Tony, his third personal foul. Free throw here. Oh, Tom, so that's <laughs> the defensive possession. They just had that bad pass on the inbound play, and that a quick offensive possession by Guillory launching that three. He hasn't shot a three all game. So a miss there by Zevion Jones. It's a four-point ball game. Fine schlichting here. They've got him. So they'll give it off to Wells. Wells will shoot a three. No, skims off the, just skids off the side of the iron. Ball went out of bounds. Last touch by Mount Lake Terrace. So Ferndale retains possession now with 17 seconds to go down by four. And Ferndale doesn't need a three right here. They just need a bucket. They need two points in this possession. Get three, it's obviously great, but they need two points. Cut this to a two point lead. Play the free throw game. 17 seconds left in the game. Looking to throw it in. Guillory does. Three on the way by Schlichting. Good! But you'll take the three, right? You'll take uh, the three. The, he had no, he had no space to launch this. I don't watch think this. he. I don't think he saw it. Watch this on the replay. I yeah. mean, that's that's Vito McCurchin right in his grill. There, you can't Let's you can't have any better defense by McCurchin right here without fouling him right in his grill. Put hand right in his face. Schlichting's just trying to put it up, and make something happen. Phenomenal, fantastic. So the shot clock is dead, 13.6 seconds to play. All right, now you gotta see, and this is where assistant coaches really make their money. It's not much, but they make it, is who <laughs> do we foul? And that's one of those right. things, you've watched film, you've seen as much as you can to see what do these guys do. 
But it's hard to sometimes see when you're watching film, you're watching for plays, for nuances, for things you can exploit. You don't always know who that free throw shooter that you really want to put at the free throw line might be in a late game situation. I got to look for Anima to get the ball and not give the ball up. He's going to try to keep this ball, I'm sure. But you also know Naylon Sue's going to put his best players on the floor. And Guillory is not out there. Nope. Because he's got four he's personal got fouls. He's got four fouls. He got Jules Terry taking the spot. They're going to try to get a steal first and foremost. If not, get that quick foul. Looking to throw it in. Maddox does. Foul call. Quickly on Luke Wells. Off the inbound. Yeah, couldn't get the steal. Boy, only just a couple of tenths of a second. And I think Tick that might be Wells' fifth. And you know what? Okay. Here's the deal. Yeah. Ferndale's only played six guys tonight. So Luke Wells just fouled out. They're obviously bringing back Guillory. But he, he left Wells on the court with those four fouls because he's got a six-man rotation here at the playoffs. And just a reminder that both teams will advance to the regionals next week. That's all decided tomorrow, who they play, when they play. You like a higher seed. Free throw on Ima. First one, good. It's a two-point ball game. If this is a two-point game, I want to see Guillory get to the court, get up the court, get to the middle of it, either take it yourself or kick the Schlick team to see if he can't get a three. Next one, good. He's got 21 points in the ball game. It's a three-point lead. 12 seconds to go. Guillory brings it up, weaves through traffic, gives it to Schlichting. Schlichting will measure, fire, won't go. Down to four seconds to go, back up, no. And Malik Terrace is going to win the district championship. We're going to have a foul called first. Not the greatest look by Schlichting. He just, well, he just, great defense by Motlick Terrace to prevent it from getting an open look. Well, and, Schlich, and, and, and I said it, I guarantee you, if I said it, Nalen Schutz said it a couple times in that timeout. If we're up by three, you know who's going to shoot this rock. Yeah. I mean, and they had great defense when Schlichting dropped that three with 14.3 left to get him down by one. Unfortunately, couldn't do it twice. The foul's on Jules Terry. Jackson Dubiel, first free throw, good. That'll that make it four it right points, there. and that's it. Yep. One second was already going to be tough regardless, but... Next one by Dubiel, good. 58-53. Long launch, and that will be that. And the Mount Lake Terrace Hawks get the win. Final score of 58-53. to So huh. now both teams will await what happens tomorrow. The, this game will go into the RPI bucket to see where they're rated, and then the committee will decide... How good is Mount Lake Terrace? How good is Ferndale? From and what I'll, we saw tonight, they're both pretty good teams. And I'll tell you right now that we, we knew that Terrace was good. They're RPA number four in the state. I mean, that is phenomenal. That's fantastic. They weren't going to drop, even with a loss, they're not going to drop out of that top eight. But the top four get a host or be a, a local host site, not right. necessarily their home gym, their yeah, home floor. Yeah. But they get a host that, as opposed to having to travel farther away if they're the five seed. So big for them, but I'll tell you right now, Ferndale's RPI number 26. Tom, this is not the 26th best no. team in the state. This is much, much better than that. Very impressed by this Ferndale squad. I told you this, uh, we were off the air, and you hate it when I say things off the air, but I'll tell you what, <laughs> that is the best 11 and 10 team I've watched in a long time, and they gave Terrace everything they could handle. Five points by Terrace, that, that win in the end, but congrats by them to get this district trophy. They're going to uh, present the uh, district championship a trophy here at center court. Then Steve's down on the floor, and he'll get a few words with some of the uh, – with uh, Nalen Sood and some of the players yeah, here. Yeah, player of the game yet? Hey, Steve Willits, by the way. Who, who do you think for player of the game? Well, hold, Nalen Sood didn't want him to get to 54, right? Is that, is that correct? <laughs> and they've got 53. Well done, Joel. <laughs> remind, remind him of that math. What do you think, Steve, for player of the game? Well, I'll boys. tell you what, we've got two shirts, but it would be hard to not have Jeffrey Anaima be one Anaima of them. Anaima right? has to be one. He yeah, brought absolutely. them back when they were down by 10, basically put them on his back at that point. And, yep. of course, Xavion Jones was huge down the stretch, too, so I, I think you could make an argument for either of those two. Let's talk to both of them. I think we will. We've got two shirts, so why not, right? Well, there you go. I, I, and not that it's, it's a player of the game, but I'll tell you what, player of the first half, 15 points for Anaima in that first half, initial 21 total. Xavion Jones... 
Had four points in the first half, finishes with... And how about we go down to Nalen Sood right now. Coach Sood, when was the last time you won a district championship? Uh, I can't remember the years very well, but <laughs> I think we won it in 2003, 13. 2013, we've had some opportunities, but like I said, we've run into good basketball teams. Like tonight, the kids just fought. I don't have magic words, they just fought. They competed, and now that's the best, most beautiful thing in the world, seeing them cut down the nets. Absolutely, well crazy, we talked about it in the first half, how you had to overcome a 10 point deficit. You had to do it again in the second half. You came out and let them take the lead, and I think for a while there we were wondering, however, and Joel Boyer just pointed this out, you told us at halftime you didn't want to have them get 54, I see a 53 up there on the board. And not only that, they went four minutes and 48 seconds without scoring a point up until 13 seconds left. Your defense. Hat. We've hung our hat on defense all year. No more did it, was it epitomized than tonight at this time by those kids. You know, it's, a, it's 12 weeks of a process. And the process, they kept believing and believing. And we'll super enjoy this tonight and see what next week brings. But after all, these kids, Ferndale's kids, you know, it's too bad you can't crown a couple because... There's been so much going on with these guys during the season. I, I'm just so happy and proud of these kids of what they just accomplished. We talk about Jeffrey Annie Eman, what he means. Xavion Jones, obviously, tonight. Jackson Dubio with the play at the end. How about your coaches, though? You've had these guys with you for a very long time. You know, I, I'm just part of I'm just one cog in this thing. But Philly, he keeps telling me magic words, which I'll talk about after the season. McCall, Jesse, a former player. Um, you know, I... I'm just blessed, and it's some guys that aren't here also that um, have helped these guys, the Mark Armsteads, the Dean Lotz, that coach them in the offseason, Al Shannon developed these kids, JV. It's a complete team of a staff, and I'm just happy to be a part of it. And, you know, this is for all the Terrace Hawk fans out there that stuck with these kids and, and got excited about it. A nice blend of you. You got sophomores, juniors, seniors all contributing. Really is a testimony to some of the youth programs that you have around here. But talk about some of these guys just in terms of what they meant individually. Well, you know, it starts with Jeffrey. He's a warrior. He competes. He battles. But, you know, the other seniors, Addison and Emmanuel and Mason Town and Vito and Tigran McCurchin, you know, they kept this team together when we had that long layoff. We battled the, the COVID like everybody. And they, they just, they kept it together. And, you know, the best part of my day, I've said this, is two and a half, three hours a day with these kids and tape in practice, just that stuff right there. I'm just fortunate to be a part of coaching these guys, and I mean that whether we win this game or not. Coach, huge smile under the mask here. Proud of you. Congratulations. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Steve. And now Steve will make his way down to talk to some of the players, if we can, our players of the game. I think he's uh, got yeah, his sight set. I think we need to go talk to Jeffrey Anima here in just a moment. He's he's doing some family stuff here right now too, though. Let's. He, he's getting over here. The whole cr Jeffrey Anima getting a nice hug from his brother Derek here and the rest of the family. Well, first of all, come over, Derek. You played in this program for three years. You've watched little brother for four. What does it mean for you? I see you at the games all the time. Oh, I just want to cry right now. It means so much, especially to see that him do it. Even even though I couldn't, I'm so happy for him. I'm so happy for him. Well, and Jeffrey, you've grown up in the gym. I've been watching you come to Malik Terrace games since you were probably about half my size here. For you to do it with that Terrace name on the jersey, what does it mean for you right now to cut down that net? You know, it, it means a lot. Uh, I've been dreaming about these moments since I was a young, young and watching my brother play. I've always wanted to put a banner up, and uh, today I got to do the, I got to do that, and I'm so happy right now. It didn't look like you were going to get to do it early. It was a 10-0 deficit. It looked as though, I don't, I don't want to take anything away from your teammates, but you kind of put everybody on your back for a little while there. You scored a ton of points, made some really tough key plays. What was the mentality trying to come back from that 10-point deficit? Uh, the same thing happened against Arlington. We were down 10-0, but I just, you know, stayed hungry, stayed aggressive, and I wanted it really bad. So I just, you know, if it means I have to score a little bit more, I got to do it. So it just meant a lot. I just, I just kept being aggressive, and, you know, it's a full 32 minutes. You know, the first four minutes might not have not gone our way, but as long as we just stay with it and stay aggressive, we'll come out on top. What does it mean to do it with this group of guys? It means a lot. I've grown up with these guys. I've been playing with these guys since fourth, third grade, some even kindergarten. So this is just a brothership, and I'm just glad I got to do it with these guys. I wouldn't want to do it with anyone anyone else. Absolutely. I don't want you to go too far. I'm going to give you a shirt right now. We're going to get a picture with you and Xavier on here in a few minutes, but i got to get a couple interviews. But again, congratulations, and hey, do us a favor for the Malik Terrace folks out there. Let's not fall down by 10 points in the regional. What do you say? I, I won't. I won't. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations, Jeffrey.
Let's go ahead and work our way over here right now. We're going to try to get Xavion Jones right now. And Archie Malloy, the football coach, is congratulating his running back slash linebacker. But today, he's a forward on this basketball team. Xavion, big game from you. Only a sophomore, you're cutting down a net. What does it mean? It feels good. It feels good to finally win, you know what I'm saying? A hard season, a hard fought season. A hard fought came, came back. We were down, but it's not how you start. It's always how you finish. And this was an aggressive game tonight, too. A lot of contact, a lot of intensity. You're a big guy. You kind of like that, don't you? Yeah, I like all intensity. I like trash talking. I like getting to people. Tell me about that one play. Down by two here, and you got a, a ball, and you broke away and laid it in. Key play when your team needed it most. Oh, uh, The first thing I was doing, we had to win, so I was trying to score, really. How are you feeling about moving on here to regionals? I know we think of you as a football guy because you've been outstanding since your freshman year, kind of introducing yourself to the varsity basketball scene. What has your sophomore year been like just in general for you? Uh, I've been playing good. I could be playing better, though. The whole plan is to get to stay and win stay, so. All right, best of luck to you next week. We're going to give you a shirt here, too. You're one of our players of the game, so enjoy that. We'll get a picture with you and Jeffrey in a little bit. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, we got Chris Megan right here, too. Let's talk to Chris for a minute. Chris, a lot of intensity from you. Saw you kind of getting the guys fired up. You were down 10-0. You looked like you were one of the vocal Steve, leaders Steve, out there. Steve, turn, yeah. turn around so oh, we can see you up here. Let's this way here, okay. Yeah, we have, have him wave at us. And hold the, hold the, hold hold the trophy for you, there. there we go. There you go. Tom Lafferty doing the directing there. There you go. Hey, tell us a little bit about that first quarter when you were coming back, because I noticed Jeffrey was getting a lot of the points, but you seemed to be kind of the guy that was directing a lot of it vocally. Um, yeah, we were struggling. Uh, they, were, they were hitting shots, and we couldn't really make anything. And I, told, I looked right over at Jeff, and I was like, hey, bro, we need you right now. And he just turned up, um, and I was just kind of yelling at everyone on defense, get their man, uh, kind of stay away from the help, and just keep playing. You're a district champ. How does it feel? Uh, it feels pretty good, but, you know, we got to keep doing more. We got to keep working. Okay, that was weird. Uh, <laughs> we got to keep working and, you know, just keep progressing and hope to move further down the road. So A, a championship kiss right there. Chris Megan, congratulations. I appreciate it. Let's talk to this guy here, Jackson. Jackson's been making big plays all year. I want to talk to you about that one over here, that one that I think people are going to talk about for a long time. All game, I'm sitting there guarding the inbounder. I'm like, man, I got to get one of these. I got to get one of these. I saw him throw it. I got it. I didn't throw it to Jeffrey. Got tipped off. Grabbed it. I couldn't go left hand. Had to go right hand. Had to secure the bus bucket big time. Could you, could you believe how open it was once you got it? It was like a, I was just. Like, I looked around. I was like, no one's there. I was like, let's go, baby. It's big time. Big time. What's it mean for you? You're only a sophomore. You've been getting some key minutes this year. You've made a huge contribution. What were your expectations coming into the season? Uh, before the season, the summer, I was like, hopefully I can get on the varsity team. And then as the season started, I realized I'm going to get some minutes, and I'm just like trying to seize every moment. I know this year it's going to be, we're not done yet. And obviously I'd like to look forward next year, but right now I'm just focusing on regionals and then state in the Comodome, baby. Let's go. There you go. Congratulations, Jackson. Okay, we're going to start to walk off. I'm going to get a couple more interviews as we walk off here. We've got Addison Maddox over here in a moment, too. We're going to try to... Addison, I'm going to come over here so we can get off the floor so these guys can get ready for the girls' game. But, Addison, you're heading to Hawaii to play baseball next year, but right now you're heading to Tacoma to play a little more basketball. How are you feeling? I'm feeling amazing, man. Our team's worked so hard for this. All the practices, man, just put in all the minutes we need to. Man, we deserved it more than any team here. I believe it 100%. I saw you dunk last week, and you put up, the, uh, you put up online that, hey, baseball guys have some athleticism too. You certainly do. How much fun are you having this year? Man, I'm having a lot of fun, man. Senior year, worked so hard with all my buddies for all these years, four years. Finally out there to just put it all to work. Man. Four fouls early in the third quarter there. Were you a little nervous? A little nervous, but I knew I knew my guys had my back. I mean, we just, we fought. We fought. We never gave up one second. Never thought we were going to lose it. Your mom is the academic coordinator. I know she's had a lot to do with the success of this program and keeping these guys straight. Tell me what it means to have that journey with her. I know your dad sometimes works the scorebook, so it's kind of been a family affair. What's that been like? I mean, it's just, we bleed tears. Always have ever since I was little. It's great to be a part of this program. I don't want to be a part of any other program. Addison, I know you grew up in this program. You're now a, a district champion at Mount Lake Terrace Hawks. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. There we go. So Addison, Maddox out there, too. Let's see. We might even try to get a couple more interviews here if you guys are cool with it here. We're cool. There we go. We're Let's cool see if we can it. get do, a... Do we have an option? <laughs> we... <laughs> Let's as see if we can get the McCursions in a minute here. As long as you got them facing this camera, Let's Steve. See. Vito, Vito's getting ready to run off. Let's see if maybe we can get Vito and Tegan here in a minute. Can we get you for a second on STSBN? Let's see, I don't know where your brother just went to. We're trying to get out of the way here. I, I saw TV in just a second ago. For you guys to have this journey together, what's that meant? It meant everything, man. Like, every day in practice, we work hard every day. You know, just coming together as a team every day. So, it means a lot. 
Been watching you play for a couple of years now. It seems like the minutes have been getting distributed a little differently at times too. Sometimes you get more minutes than others. Team effort, right? Team team concept, and that's kind of what Malik Church preaches. Yeah, of course. Team effort every, every day, you know, on the defensive end especially. That's what we preach. I know they really preach defense, and you're a defender, so a program that kind of fits you ideally? Yeah, 100%. Okay, well, Tegan, get over here real quick. And Tegan's even wearing a Vito hat. Oh, you, you got both your names on it. Okay. Just asked Vito, tell me about what it's like to play with your, your twin brother and what this means for you guys together. Oh, I love it. We've been, we've been playing together ever since we were four years old. Um, we've been talking about this district championship since we were, like, in sixth grade with Jeffrey. It's, it means everything. Like, this... To, we went, to see uh, Derek, Derek's senior year, we went to their uh, district championship game against Woodway, and they lost, and we were like, that's not happening to us. So um, I'm just thankful that we got it done. So they lose in your sixth grade year, and you're at the game watching, and you're already talking about this very moment. Yeah, exactly. It feels pretty good to win, then, doesn't it? It feels amazing. Never a doubt when you guys were trailing there in the fourth? Nope. We're sticking together as a team all the way through. There you go, the McCurchin brothers. Guys, best of luck in the uh, regionals. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. So there you have it, the Mel Lake Terrace Hawks, winners of the district. And I got to tell you, I think Naylon might have forgotten one there because he mentioned 2013. Yeah. I broadcasted that game. I think they lost the championship game. So uh, it <laughs> might have been a little longer than that. Don't, yeah. don't ruin no, the night no, for him. No. But it sounds better that way, right? It's been even longer. So this is a big moment for Mel Lake Terrace and Naylon suit and the, uh, the crew. There you go. Thanks very much, Steve, down to the floor. Let's go to Buddy Patrick with a look at the numbers in this one. We'll take a look. look. We'll take a look at Ferndale first as a team, 18 for 42 shooting from the field, 43%, five for 19 from three point range, 26%, 12 of 19 from the free throw line for 63%. Individually leading the team, 21, 20 points for Mark Schlichting, 18 points for Jalen Gilroy, 15 turnovers for the Ferndale Golden Eagles. For the victorious Mount Lake Terrace Hawks as a team shooting 22 of 58, 38% from the field, five of 15 from three point range, 33%. 9 of 13 from the line for 69%. Leading all scores, Jeffrey Anemia, 21 points, 16 points for Xavion Jones with 14 of those points, or 12 of those points coming in the second half. Nine turnovers for the victorious Mount Lake Terrace Hawks. Thank you very much. Thanks again to Joel Boyer for being with us here tonight, along with Steve Willett, Buddy Patrick on the stats. Todd Elvig, Sarah Elvig running the show and all the cast of thousands in the truck. Again, the final score, the Mount Lake Terrace Hawks 58, the Ferndale Golden Eagles 53. I'm Tom Lafferty, and good night from Everett Community College.